case you missed the biggest news in Brock last year. Excuse me! That, of course, was Josh Freeze joining the Foo Fighters as the new drummer after the passing of the late, great Taylor Hawkins. Today, we're breaking down what makes Josh Freeze so incredible. We're going to figure out why Dave Grohl, Sting, Trent Reznor, Guns N' Roses, Danny Elfman, Rob Zombie, Avril Lavigne, the list goes on forever. We're going to figure out why all of these artists and producers absolutely love the shit out of Josh Freeze and what he does on the drums. Let's get into it. So much power is so solid. Hear those flams? Oh! Oh man, oh my god. Dave is loving this. Single kicks in between that bit. Back to quarters on the kick. Double bass. Woo! Up. Oh. I'm hearing a little bit of uh, Terry Bozio influence in that last fill. Dave is just loving this, and I think there's a special reason why. Right in the middle of that solo, he's referencing You Know What You Are, which is the Nine Inch Nails song, which he used to tour playing with Nine Inch Nails and playing that part every night. But here's the crazy part. Dave Grohl played that on the record. So it's the perfect little moment where he's bringing it all together. I mean, we're talking probably 20 years of music history or, or more that he's coalescing in such a beautiful way, so much power and speed and like energy. His energy is out of this world. So I found an original clip of Josh playing it with Nine Inch Nails. Let's check that out. That's sick. I don't listen to Nine Inch Nails at all, to be honest. That little kick drum in between the hi-hats, sick. What's so fantastic about that is how much Josh Freeze commands the band and drives it forward. It's not about any fancy stickings. It's about knowing the basics as deep as you can and really using that to drive forward everything. You don't have to play anything but some singles, some kicks, but if you can play those beats to perfection with power and feel, groove, pocket, and drive, then you have what it takes. That's what I'm getting from this clip at least, right? And here's the thing about playing like that. If you want to keep that up with that amount of power, you have to have your hand fundamentals completely down and stay as relaxed as possible. 
He's playing with tons of power, but the only reason he can do that on stage for so long every single night is because he has that efficiency. He's giving it his all, but he's getting so much mileage out of it because he has the technique for it. If you haven't checked it out already, I made a Technique Fundamentals course on my website that's totally free. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. And apologies for the sound quality on some of these clips. I'm grabbing them from Instagram and they're just phone clips apparently. One thing that's really important that I'm really seeing here, again, fundamentals. It's not about playing anything too outlandish. It's about can you hit that rim shot perfectly, exactly the same, at the same spot, at the same volume, every single time, because he is not missing a single rim shot. He's just slamming it perfectly every single time. That's something my teacher really stressed upon me, which was practice hitting that rim shot so it sounds identical every single time for five minutes straight. Can you do that? put the practice into that because that consistency is what gives the entire band confidence and it gives groove and consistency and a quality of solidity that the audience and the listener can grab onto as well. And those rim shots, da -da -da -da, I mean, it's just thick. just has the power. And even there, you can see how great his fundamentals are, the way he's slanting on the crash symbol. He's not playing through it, right? Fundamentals right there again, double kick and snare. Singles with the feet, singles with the snare, no flaming, super clean, sounds fantastic. I don't have a double kick to play it that fast. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. As I've been making a couple of these episodes, Vader said, hey, what are some other artists on our roster that you could feature? This was actually way before the Foo Fighters news. Vader sent me a couple sticks to check out. Josh Freeze's signature stick. They're called the H220 sticks. No clue what that stands for. Maybe we can ask Josh that. Let's see how they feel. Woo, nice. A little more forward than I'm used to, so there's more power from them. A little less rebound, I would say. The rebound isn't as fast, but more power for sure out of the drums, which is perfect for what he's doing. I'm pretty confident this is Josh playing with Sting. Ooh, oh, that is beautiful. I don't have two splash to show you, but... What I love about this clip is he's not playing as bombastically as the Foo Fighter solos. He's got some subtlety, but still a ton of power and drive. Like I've mentioned in some other videos, I think about 70% of the drummers I've done breakdowns on so far in this channel have played with Sting. So if you're not already subscribed and you wanna see some other drummers playing with Sting and sounding fantastic and learning from that, then hit the subscribe button and uh, let me know who else you wanna break down on the channel. Oh, that was beautiful. Something like that. Wow, what? Ah! That's a beautiful little phrase there. Kick, flam, right on the hi-hat. Yeah, ooh, that's nice. Let's break that down in detail, hold on. Kick, flam, hat, kick, flam, hat, kick, right, left, doom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that, that. That's nice.
That's great stuff. I love how Josh is referencing Stuart Copeland in the way that he's playing this, but still doing his own thing. And by the way, I did do a Stuart Copeland breakdown video just a couple weeks ago. So go check that video out. I'm going to leave a link in the description for that video. All right, next clip. Snares off. Oh. That was super Terry Bozio. And I, I do a similar thing, not from a Terry influence. Playing that flame on the E. Not exactly, but it's kind of that Steve Gadd Mozambique thing. So the gad thing is, David Asensio would call it a one bar clave. I would think of it as the bayon rhythm with the left hand. He's not doing exactly that, but it's kind of that vibe. Was he doing a little samba? Oh man, I love that. I love seeing the difference in approach between how Josh is playing these big venues and festivals versus Keith Carlock, because Keith Carlock is using the subtleties and which honestly get lost in translation a little bit in these giant venues, whereas Josh is going for straight singles and power and it's insane. Nah, he's still, he's going down in dynamics perfectly. Like beautiful how he's coming down, back up, a little bit of the, a little bit of that Latin thing of going into like the semi triplets, right? Snares back on. Let's go. These clips are, are blowing me away and I love breaking them down for you guys. I need you guys to let me know who else should I break down on the channel? Who else do we want to dig into that we can take inspiration from and push ourselves to be better? I love making these videos with you guys and for you guys. Let me know who else you want to see on the channel. Ah, uh, man, the, the, the flame on the ease. I am so here for it. That is like my jam. Like I do that all the time. <laughs> He's also tuning that high tom pretty tight. Kind of reminds me of the Copeland stuff. It really projects beautifully. Triplets. Man, he's an animal. He is an animal. He is going all out with that. I think he turned the snares back off as well, which was pretty sick.
I don't have much to say about that. That was just beautiful. Now, if you want to play on this level, there's some other concepts that we haven't even explored yet today. So if you want to jump into that and get some incredible inspiration on the way, then check out this video right here.